Alrighty, welcome back everyone. So we are on to the portion of the project where we're going to be laying the ground plane. So the way we're going to do that is by going to place and we're going to be clicking on a polygon pour. And what we'll end up doing is um, putting them on the same layers our signal traces. And I'll show you how that, that happens. So um, we'll just start with the top layer and we'll start on the low voltage side. So quickly, I think I want my set my snap grip to one one millimeter, um, just because we're laying like a large area of copper right here. So it just makes it simpler to to draw the the lines and stuff. So yeah, just go with place polygon pour, and then I'll zoom in right here, and we'll pick something just just on the I'm looking at something just on the outside of this capacitor right here, and that lines up pretty well. And then something that's just above the top of my MOSFET right here, just for um, symmetry purposes. So then we are going to just kind of kind of just trace down here. Then we're gonna get to about here. I think I'm gonna go over a little bit. And we'll go down again, and then just below the bottom of, of this overlay right here, and then we're going to bring it right there, and we'll click again. Then we're going to right click, and then that's going to give us our polygon, so the things we need to do is select the polygon, we need to assign a net to that polygon, so we'll hit the, select the low voltage ground net, and then we'll hit re-pour, and then also I want to note that I have selected remove islands less than I actually want to change this to a hundred and so hit report as again as well so what that's doing and we don't really see any I don't know if we'll see any on this board but this is a good habit to get into um, and I can explain what like it, it kind of shows you what islands are so islands are like this area right here let me see if I deselect this so it shows like it's like a I mean it's kind of self-explanatory you see that's like an island of copper in between traces um, they can cause problems for your board in the future, so that's just good to have that selected. And then also remove dead copper is actually a good one as well. Um, so yeah, like I said, we probably won't see any examples of it um, manifesting on this side because it's just a big chunk of copper. There's not a lot of intricate components being laid over it. Um, so yeah, and then so what we'll do actually is we'll go to the bottom layer now and we'll do the same exact thing. We're just going to trace right over it. And let me see, so we'll hit place and we'll do polygon pour. And we're just gonna trace, really just do an exact copy of the low voltage ground. Then we're going to do the same thing where we assign this to a low voltage ground and we have all of our things selected. Make sure you hit report and then we'll see it show up. So if you zoom in really, really close, you can see that it is connected right here. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much, and we'll make sure we select remove dead copper as well and I'll hit report. So that pretty much is, that's that's pretty much the gist of it is how, how we do that for the ground planes. Um, and then we'll come over here actually and we'll do the same exact thing and I'll put it make a couple notes on where we're gonna stop our ground plane because if you notice coming into the AC line we actually routed the quote-unquote the low the the what would I call it the lower potential side because you know you have like the like, uh, current flows from higher potential to lower potential right so that's what our ground plane is acting as is a connection to the to the low volt to the to zero volts right however in this spot right here we have already routed that quote unquote zero volt that return path right so we're not actually going to be placing a ground plane over these components here at all um, it's actually going to be somewhere it's probably going to be starting somewhere right around here around these capacitors actually um, maybe even um, somewhere all the way over here to this well yeah I think these capacitors might work actually so that's probably what we'll do right there so let's click over select Reselect the top layer, then we'll hit place, then we'll do polygon pour, and then we will select 
I'm just going a few few like a couple millimeters um, to the right of these um, mounting holes right here for the transformer because basically we got to connect to this high voltage one right um, so we'll go down here and then we'll stop the same spot and then we will come over like a millimeter or so and then we'll just keep going down and then we'll see how this looks I don't think we're connecting to any low voltage side Okay, looking good so far. All right, so now for this, we will drag it all the way to just a little bit to the side of this, because so so I'm eyeballing this this point right here. Um, so I'm going to be just on the the outside of that, and then we can drag it up, and then we'll click and select. So again, we need to we actually we need to reselect this. So we need to assign a net. So this net is going to be high voltage ground. Remove dead copper. We already have removed by this list, and we will change it to 100. We probably again we probably won't see anything pop up like this. It gets we'll see when we have more high density uh, routing examples. So this is pretty good right here. Um, So yeah, all in all, it looks pretty nice, pretty neat. Um, let's see. So then, yeah, we're just gonna go rinse and repeat. Do the we we'll, we'll might we might see some. It'll probably look a little bit different here because we have all of our surface mount components on this side. So we'll see how it, it turns out. But yeah, so same exact process, and we're just gonna trace this now. Then make sure that's selected as high voltage ground. Remove copper islands. Let's then change that to 100 square millimeters and remove dead copper. And then we're going to hit repour. And that's what we get. So it doesn't really look like we came across any uh, copper islands with our, with our routing configuration. So we didn't really see any removed here. Um, so maybe whenever we, we have some boards that have a good examples of that, I'll show you they look like so yeah so then we have a nice good connection here with the high voltage ground so yeah um, so this is pretty much all we have to do for our, our ground plane so the next thing I want to do is probably go to view and I will do go back to board planning mode and we're gonna hit design and we're gonna hit edit board shape because what we'll do is we'll pull it in a little bit right there we gotta make sure we we stay clear because remember when we did those that preliminary design rule check we had those errors see we can we can really shrink in our board like a lot with this strategy um, with this configuration like you might think like oh we could rotate it sideways a little bit and then squeeze it in and we might be able to do that like that that's a like a maybe um, like in terms of would it still work and the answer is like probably um, but we didn't really we had no reason to like this that would that would be that decision would be driven by it like a, some type of other design constraint so yeah um, so let's see um, so yeah so I would say here we'll, we'll hit save and then we'll do this is not what we're looking at sorry this is the wrong one um, let me close out of this project So here we'll hit you know, we have that save so what we'll do is we'll do a design rule check just to make sure that everything is accounted for and let's see board outline clearance okay so we get dinged for an error let's um that's all I want to click here edge and text q2 okay so it's at q2 okay right here okay so what we can do we have two options either make our board bigger or we move this q2 over a little bit and i think moving the q2 over a little bit is is fine um so it's so obvious what q2 is okay let's try that again 
run design rule check. Okay, we got nothing. So that means this board, perfect. So that means this board follows, meets all of our design rules. There's no errors. Um, let's do quickly, let's do edit origin set, and then we'll put it here. We probably need to shrink my. Uh, My snap grid to, to fit. So let's go 0.5 millimeters. Nope. So we gotta go 0.1. Oh wow, still not. Okay, let's we'll put the origin here and then we'll see if we can make our board a little because I want to put the board right at the origin. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just go back to um, view board planning mode and I'll design and I'll go to edit board shape and then I will. And there we go, we're right on the origin, I think. Or no, we're still off a little bit. Okay, now we're at zero. I looked in the bottom left and I saw we're at zero millimeters on the X axis, so. I will just go to 2D layout. Okay, so this pretty much um, the, like I said, this board's pretty much finished. Um, I think next video we will we'll do a quick view just to, just to look at it. So here's all our beautiful components lined up. Um, like I said, it looks pretty cool. This is why I love adding those 3D bodies because this really makes the board pop whenever you're done. Um, so I, I really, yeah, this is the, the main reason why. And this also has really valuable information for say you're trying to make a case for this board you need to know all the mechanical information on like what's the clearance height, you know, for all your components. Um, and let's go look at the other side too. So you can see all of our wonderful, so here's our filtering inductor, it's, it's massive. Here's our bridge rectifier. Here's our flyback controller. It looks really cool. Like this board looks, looks really, really neat. Um, so, yeah, feel feel good about yourself. Like we're making great progress with our design skills. Like imagine compare this board to our, our first one and you can see we made a huge, huge progress. Um, quickly, yeah, so these mounting holes, what these are these are acting as our our power ports for like like this is basically where you attach this would come out as twenty four volts, five amps, right? And this is so I just left it as open holes so you could solder some wires there to power whatever peripheral you want or something. Um, but we'll, the projects we're going to be exploring that I have planned for us, we'll be doing a lot of these. This power, this power, will be provided. A lot of power will be on board. Meaning, this flyback would be powering some type of peripheral um, that is going to be on board. So these, this would this would be routed to like a power plane or something like that in the future. So that's kind of where we're going next with this type of project. Um, so yeah. Um, I think what I'll do is in the end is I'll start. So the next next videos we're gonna be prepping this for sent being to be sent to a, a fabrication house. So I'll just show you how I do that, and then I'll kind of cover um, all the stuff I kind of go about with that. So uh, please drop a like if this video helped you out at all. I really appreciate it. Help my channel out a ton. Um, please subscribe if you want to stay up to date with all of the videos I'm releasing for this project. I also post a lot of electrical engineering related content. So. That might be something you're interested in. Um, yeah, I'll say thank you so much, and I hopefully I will see you in the next video.